Okay, today we're going to talk about exponential and logarithmic models. So, we want you to learn to recognize the five most common types of models that involve exponential and logarithmic functions. And we're going to use exponential growth and decay functions to model and solve real life problems. You'll learn about Gaussian functions, logistic growth functions, and also other logarithmic functions uh, that will help us model and solve real life problems. So let's first talk about the most common exponential functions. The first one is called exponential growth. Okay, you notice this takes the form of y equals a times b to the x. When we're talking about our transformations of functions, we see that this a is going to affect vertical um, uh, uh, stretch or compression and the B will affect horizontal stretch or compression, right? But this B has to be greater than zero, so we're not going to have anything that causes this function to decrease in value. It will automatically be something greater than zero. Then we have exponential decay, okay? And this can be contrasted with the other one where we had exponential growth because Either we show it with a negative b and b is greater than zero, or a positive b and b is less than zero. Either way, we see that the impact is that instead of going up, our function goes down exponentially. The next one is called the Gaussian uh, function model. And what we see here is we have a base, instead of our base being um, well, I guess all these are basey. Uh, some of them, instead of our base just being uh, something normal, we have negative x minus b squared divided by c. Okay, so that's that's really sort of an abnormal thing um, to have in here. But what this does is it results in a model where we kind of have like a bell-shaped curve. Okay. And so we will talk in detail about the, more about this later. And then here we have what's called logistical growth. Now logistical growth, we'll talk more about it later, but it basically has two horizontal asymptotes. Uh, we have one at the bottom, one at the top, and so this happens in populations where we have some growth limiting factor um, that causes, you know, really high amounts of growth, but then we kind of peter out with that growth. Okay, so this is going to look like a divided by 1 plus b times e to the negative rx, and where r is going to be the growth rate. Um, next what we have is common logarithmic math models, and I've shown these on um, the same scale so that you can see the difference. One we is a plus b times ln of x, and this other one here is a plus b times log of x. And we see the log one kind of goes more vertical faster and then and tapers out. And the ln of x, because of course it has a different base, this log x has a base of 10, and ln of x is of course log base e, um, which is 2.71. But these are naturally occurring phenomenon that use this, like the Richter scale, the decibel scale, pH, human memory, and there's many, many more that could use this, but th these are the most common ones, uh, with the top three being the utmost common ones that you'll see. So let's talk about Gaussian models, okay? Gaussian models are used in probability and statistics, and they represent normally distributed uh, populations. It's a bell-shaped curve, and it allows us to talk about the average value for a population at this max value of the curve, okay? And we see that 50% of the population occurs to the right of that max value and 50% occurs to the left, and we can do a lot with this type of a model. Um, but it's something that um, we might even talk about the area under a curve, okay? Because that might be something that we need to talk about in probability and statistics. If you ever take a probability and statistics course, you'll learn more about these models in great detail. Uh, logistic growth models. These 
are used for populations with rapid growth following by, followed by declining rate of growth, okay? So say you've got a limiting factor to your population growth. You've got a pond that can only hold so many fish before they all start to die out uh, for various reasons. You might talk about deer in a herd, product saturation in a market. Um, there might be all types of different scenarios where you'd want to have a logistic growth model. Um, and product saturation in a market is really kind of the basis of the name of this with logistic growth. So how many iPhones can we sell before people stop wanting to buy them? It has to do with supply and demand, you know, and a uh, limited population who is able to purchase or wants to purchase. Okay, so these are the five types of models. And really looking at them and dealing with them is going to be more of something you just need to experience uh, in class. So I did not really include any um, examples in this, and that was because I want you to just see how that works in class, okay? Um, and the examples might be a little bit too lengthy for this as well. So um, we are going to do more with these types of examples uh, in class, and I will see you later on that.